Hi, Michelle Kunz here. Today we're going to have a lesson on arterial blood gases. And we'll even use the zombie notes on arterial blood gases to interpret some examples. But let's talk about arterial blood gases and what they're for. They're used in critically ill patients to get a measurement of acid and base balance. You know, the pH measures the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide. It also gives us other measurements. It helps us determine how hemoglobin releases oxygen to the tissues. It lets us know how the lungs and kidneys are affecting the acid-base balance. So it gives a good idea of how critically ill patients are doing related to their oxygenation and perfusion. If you ever seen an arterial blood gas drawn, you know it's a small syringe that does have heparin in it. Usually the heparin gets squirted out of the syringe. It's just really to heparinize the syringe so the blood doesn't clot in there. If we draw the blood, we know that we usually put it on ice because we don't want carbon dioxide to build up by the time we get it over to the lab. And the lab can actually have that done within five minutes for us. So we can make patient uh, treatments or changes on the ventilator settings. So it is a helpful tool um, and measurement for perfusion. So we do measure a few items in there. And according to the zombie notes, it actually gives us a quick idea that it does talk about the pH, it talks about the CO2, it also discusses the normals for the bicarb. Now it's important to know that the pH is based on all the work that the lungs do and the kidneys do. So the lungs and kidneys will do everything in its power to make a normal pH for us. So that's pretty amazing, I think. So normal pH in our body, in the human body, is 7.35 to 7.45. Now, if you could remember that and memorize that, 7.35 to 7.45, <clears throat> you could also remember what the normal CO2 is, 35 to 45. You see that direct relationship there to the pH? So remember, the pH was 7.35 to 7.45, the CO2 is 3.5 to 4.5. So it does make that easy for me to remember those numbers and to remember that there's also a correlation between the CO2, which is the lungs business, and the pH. So the lungs excrete CO2. CO2 is respiratory acid. So when the lungs excrete CO2, it helps maintain an acid-base balance. If your lungs are not excreting enough CO2, like in patients with emphysema where it gets, the air gets trapped in there, the CO2 gets trapped, and when we're not breathing adequately, like in respiratory arrest, you retain CO2. So the respiratory acid builds up and your CO2 number will be increased. So that's partially how we're going to discuss respiratory acidosis, just to give you an idea of how this game is played. If we're breathing too rapidly, hyperventilation, we will blow off too much CO2, and then our CO2 number will be below 35, which makes us more alkaline than acidemic. Now, the bicarb is 23 to 27. Some books have a you know variation of that number, but 23, 22 to 27. And I always had a difficult time remembering um, that number, but if you don't mind, I have a little joke about that. I can remember it's the age a man wants a woman to be. 22 or 23 to 27. The good old days. But needless to say, the bicarb normal is 23 to 27. So if your bicarb level is too low, it means you do not have enough base. Perhaps your kidney excreted too much, and that would leave you more um, acidic if you don't have enough base. If you have too much base, 
your bicarb is over 27, you're more alkaline. So that is just reviewing what the norms, let's do that one more time. Normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Normal respiratory acid, CO2, is 35 to 45. And the bicarb, or base, is 23 to 27. Now the lungs and the kidneys will do everything in its power, work very hard towards getting a normal pH. So whenever we do look at an arterial blood gas, we focus on the pH first. We'll name the pH actually, whether it's acidemia or alkalemia, and then we'll be detectives in finding out who causes it or who's trying to fix the problem that's already been caused. So it, it gets a little complicated, but if we take it slow, we won't have a problem with it. I did mention that there's a direct relationship between the CO2 and the pH and the numbers. And sometimes that's very helpful, because if I see that the pH has gone up or down a certain number, the CO2, if it's purely a respiratory problem, will go down and up the same numbers pretty much very close. Sometimes they call it a one-to-one -one relationship. So that might help us interpret some of the arterial blood gas numbers. So when I said we're going to name the arterial blood gas, we're going to give it a first name, we'll give it a middle name, and we'll give it a last name as well. First name is pretty easy. We'll look at the pH first. Remember that is the rule, look at the pH first and we'll decide whether it's normal or not. So the correct terms for that is uncompensated or compensated pH, because we're looking at the pH first. The middle name will be what causes the problem. Was it the lungs or respiratory, or is it the kidneys metabolic? And the last name will be whether it's alkalosis or acidosis. So we have a game to play here, if, if you don't mind me saying that's a game. Number one, we said we're going to look at the pH first. And number two, we'll look at the CO2 and the bicarb to see who caused the problem. And we'll also look to see if there's anybody helping us, either the kidneys or the lungs, in correcting or compensating. Hi, we're running out of time in part one. Come see Arterial Blood Gas Part 2 for the rest of this lesson. Thanks.